We're just going to go to our last stop on this tour now. And we're going to head to the Museum of London. Now, the Museum of London is close to um, St. Paul's Cathedral and overlooks the remains of the Roman city um, on the edge of the oldest part of London. Now, it's in the process of being moved. So in a few years' time, they'll have a new, new museum. But it, the current museum actually sits, the entrance sits in a roundabout, and then you come up into this museum building here. Um, it, I think it's quite a lovely museum because it's concerned with the social history of London, its inhabitants throughout time, and documents the UK's capital city from prehistoric to modern times. So in, it's here in this museum that we have a piece of art by um, some famous um, artists called the Singh Twins, Liverpool-based sisters, the Singh Twins. And at this part, I'm just going to hand over to introduce this aspect by Sonia. Thank you, Rav. So uh, the Singh Twins uh, are Amrit and Rabindar Kaur Singh. They are contemporary British artists from uh, Liverpool and who have been widely recognized as the artistic face of modern Britain. Because through their art, they engage with social, political, and cultural issues, and they connect history with the contemporary, challenging the Eurocentric perceptions. And amongst their many awards are the member of the British Empire and inclusion in the Oxford Encyclopedia of women in world history. So uh, Rav, I'm really thrilled that you have included contemporary art in your tour today, because this is, this is our future. Our contemporary artists are the ones who are engaging with the world and creating our space in it and influencing in real time how the world sees us, the Sikh community. And I want to share with you uh, some shocking statistics here. That is, works by women artists make up only three to 5% of all museum collections in the United States. It's a shocking statistic. And the second one is that less than 15% of works uh, in permanent collections of the museums in the United States are by artists of color. It is the Singh Twins and other contemporary artists that are helping change this statistic, which is a huge contribution. And it is also an act of bravery on their part to embrace this tradition as a profession, despite all pushback. Now, unfortunately, I have not had the opportunity to visit the Museum of London and see this work uh, by, the, by the artists for myself. In fact, I did not even know about it. And so uh, thank you, Rav, for sharing this. And I will today but share with you some details of one of their works, which is in this museum, based on the details that the artists have shared with me themselves. So uh, both the, the Singh twins, they started uh, with, by studying these two paintings by the Victorian artist, Henry Nelson O'Neill. The two paintings, one on the left is Eastward Ho, and that represents the departure of the British uh, soldiers from England in 1857 to quell the Indian mutiny of 1857, also known now as the First War of Independence. And then the painting on the right uh, is, which shows us uh, the British soldiers, they're coming back, they're returning home, and the title of the painting is Home Again. It was done in 1858. And it shows uh, these soldiers coming back. They are jaded and they're forlorn. And the whole ambience of the two paintings is very different. So th these two works were the starting points for, uh, for the artists uh, to create this piece, which is on display uh, at the London Museum. And it is called Entwined. And what the artists did was they interpreted and extended the symbolism of these two Victorian paintings into this work, which is the entwined. And as you can see, this is a very complex painting. So as we talk about the details, please follow our cursor, which will help you identify the
the different characters uh, in, in the artwork. So the artists, they started with O'Neill's idea, but they replaced many of the original figures with other characters, including those that represent India's heroes of the conflict. So now you're looking at it from a different perspective. This is not a Eurocentric perspective. So when you look at the left side of the painting, we see the depiction of Mangal Pandey uh, as he was in the Bollywood film. And then there is Rani Lakshmi Bai on a horse right below. Alongside them, sorry, above them, are watching from a burst of clouds above are the notable campaigners from India's long history of struggle for freedom against successive waves of foreign invasion. As we move to the right of the painting, almost seen as disembarking from the ship. If you recall uh, the, the Victorian painting, what you see here are now Sikh veterans of the First and Second World Wars and they are representing the role that Indians played in the British uh, army. And they also represent the beginnings of Indian migration to Britain. Those are the boy Maharaja Dalip Singh, which is shown at the bottom of the painting. And then the artist's own father and grandmother. You see the lady in this uh, vibrant pink uh, salwar kameez and it, uh, alongside a small boy with a stethoscope around his neck. So this is the artist's grandmother and their father. The father grows up to be a medical doctor. So the stethoscope is, is because of that. So, so the artists are bringing their personal connection to this whole history as it is unfolding. And they themselves are depicted in this piece. Uh, if you look towards the bottom and you see them holding a paintbrush and a desk calendar, wearing the official Singh tartan one of the many symbols of British multiculturalism. Now, moving to the left again, we see along the pier, a composite British cityscape made up of some of the main towns and cities of Asian settlement, together with the famous faces of Bollywood, Hollywood, and the UK, including the England cricketer, Monty Panesar, Prince Charles, Madonna, Victoria Beckham, all symbolize cross-cultural influence the outcome of Anglo-Indian relations and the positive contributions of British Asians. And framing all of this are these red words swirling around the border, which though have been long accepted to be parts of the English language, but actually are Indian in origin. For example, jungle, uh, juggernaut, and pajamas. So those words are the ones that are all around. But uh, popping out from the painting is our beloved Foja Singh, and who, and in the background, we see the Princess Sophia Dalip Singh, who is standing up for women's voting rights in the early 20th century. As we move outside the, this frame, uh, up towards uh, the top margins, we see quotations from the illustrated London news on the Anglo Sikh wars. Prince Feroz Shah on his fight with the British, Tony Blair on the Kosovo campaign, and George W. Bush on the post 9-11 war on terror. And these can be seen flowing around the border and contained within the cartoches. These are actually serving to make an analogy uh, between the official propaganda and the rhetoric that is used by the British empire and that that is used by the modern day superpowers to justify their colonization of foreign lands. Now, this, this painting, Rav, I think we could spend the whole show we could do on just this one piece. And uh, because it has so many details in it, uh, there are stories that are entwined. There's a delightful mix of the historical, the contemporary, and the serious, and the lighthearted. But unfortunately, we have to leave it here and I hope many of you will be motivated to actually go back, visit the museum and see this magnificent piece for themselves. Uh, Rav, um, I, I, you know the Singh twins personally. So is there any particular painting that by them that has touched you? Yeah, um, yeah, thank you, Sonia. So I'm beginning to get to know them better. I was very reluctant. I always used to feel that I'm um, 
Um, I'm, I'm interrupting their work every time I used to contact them in years gone by. Um, but now we, we seem to be on better terms since December. Um, and I think just this week, you know, we're, we're in the first days of June and it's um, a time of memorial um, to remember the events of 1984. And this painting um, by the Singh twins um, is called 1984. Um, and it really does, in the same way, the detailed stories are captured around those events that took place um, in June 36 years ago. And for me, um, partly when I first saw this painting, it wasn't just the painting, it's where it was, because I believe this was on display at the Smithsonian um, in America um, as part of the Punjab galleries. Um, and just to see at least this painting on display meant that those events that took place, the story of those events could be shared from a Sikh perspective with, with people outside of the Sikh faith. Um, and that's why this, this painting is quite um, dear to me because, um, because of the way it's, it, it depicts lots of stories, but also presents them in a, in a gallery that attracts um, other visitors, you know, not just from the Sikh community. And again, we could spend a lot of time talking through this painting, um, but we all, you can explore this on the website um, and even on their social media. I think they were posting it last week and I think the Sikh Foundation also shared it um, with the captions that you can go and explore more and see. Yeah, thank you, Raf, for sharing this memory and also commemorating the memory of uh, Operation Blue Star in 1984. And I think uh, through this painting, Sikhs have been able to share uh, their personal tragedy and the injustice by the structures of power with the whole world. And this is really the, the power of the arts. And we at this moment are also in a time uh, when there is a movement for change of, uh, and social justice is gaining momentum in the United States. And this is with support from all over the world. Uh, Mr. George Floyd was killed by the Minneapolis police on May 25th, and he is now the face of this movement. And I pause here to remember his life and of the many other African Americans, some of whose names are commemorated on this mural, on this powerful mural, which is created by a collective of artists. And I also remind my community that it was the activism of the African-Americans led by Dr. Martin Luther King that saw the passing of the Immigration Act of 1965, opening the door for me and others like me to make America our home. So I'm sure our artists will engage with what is happening around the world and share our perspective with the world. And with this, uh, we come to the end of this inaugural tour. And I thank you, Ranveer, for enthusiastically sharing your research, your knowledge, and your expertise with all of us. I really wish I had known, uh, met you earlier during my previous trips to the UK and your tours would have made all the difference and made it so much more enriching for me. Uh, but uh, before we take questions, Ranveer, can you please uh, give us a sneak preview of the next tour that is planned? Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, that's part of the reason we're called A Little History of the Sikhs is we have a zero marketing budget. So, so, so people only find out through word of mouth that that suits me. But uh, hopefully after this, um, this episode, we'll get some more international visitors. So on the 24th of June, so it's two weeks today, um, we will be visiting some famous churches in London. So we will look at Westminster Abbey and St. Paul's Cathedral, where all the royal weddings take place. We'll visit St. Luke's Church in Chelsea. We'll visit the Pembroke College Mission. And I've got so many other churches. Um, and I just want to take you into those churches. And I want to show you the hidden Sikh stories that are on display, but relatively unknown by the Sikh community and definitely unknown by the Sikh community. It's unknown by the Christian community as well. And they, they, they've kept this stuff, you know, just memorialized. And I'm just going to take you into those churches. And they all feature in the tours because they're always en route. 
um, and if we can get him for free, it's, um, it's all the better. So that's what we'll be doing on the 24th of June um, at the 10 a.m. time, and then we'll repeat it at 7 p.m.